Okay, it looks like I'm live. Hey, you guys, it's Tamika. I wanted to pop in. I want to pop in to talk about something that is going on. I'm seeing it too often. I had a student that contacted me a few years ago about a, a, a medical question, a healthcare question. I've had things in my personal life. Um, as you may know, I've been a nurse for over 20 years. And I've been in, in various, I've worked in various settings. I've worked in the hospital, ICU, med surge. I've worked in the doctor's offices. I've been a patient myself. And so one of the things that I find out too often is that many people tend to have the fatalistic approach to health. That because, one, because someone else in my family had it, means I'm going to get it. And so what the heck, I'm just going to deal with it. And whatever the doctors want to do, they can just do. Now, I'm not here to bash any healthcare professionals, not here to bash doctors, nurses, or anybody else. I just want to encourage you that just because something happens to you does not mean you are a victim of your health, does not mean you are a victim of life. You still have choices that need to be made you still have information, of course, to share with your health care provider, your doctor, your nurse practitioner, your physician assistant, whoever it is that's caring for you, your insurance company. Number one, always know you always have a choice in your health care. Number one, you should always, number two, always be informed. And actually, this is the, this should be the first one. Always be a student of your health. Don't wait for doctors or any other healthcare professional specialist tell you what you can find out for yourself. I mean, you're with yourself 24 seven. You know what symptoms you're having, if you're having headaches, having trouble sleeping, if you're having indigestion, heartburn, um, whatever, digestive issues, heart issues, you're with yourself 24 seven. And I usually encourage people to keep a diary of your symptoms. When you go into that doctor's office, don't go in that office thinking, well, they're just going to tell me what's wrong. I'll just say a few words. They'll they'll touch me, feel, feel my stomach, listen to my lungs, and they'll be able to know what's going on. The doctor need, needs your information. Whatever is going on with you, get you a notepad, piece of paper, I journal in Walmart, um, notepad, notebooks I get from Walmart. I get them when... It's uh, school time. It's good to have these around July, end of July, August. They start selling them by the end of August into September. August, September, right? <laughs> by the end of August into September, you can get these things for like 25 cents, 10 cents. It's good to have a notepad, um, a notebook of some sort, not just pieces of paper lingering around like this, note cards. You can use those for something else. But it's good to have a notepad. And what you can do is write the date of whatever day it is and write what symptoms you're having. So when you go to the doctor's office, you have proof. You have things, you know, they can see. You give them, hand them this and say, it could say Monday and Wednesday and Friday. That's when you were having indigestion issues or whatever it was. But keep a log of what's going on with your health. It's not about obsession. It's not about being fearful because I think fear comes when we see ourselves as not in control of our health and you are in control of your health, your body, those symptoms you're experiencing is just your body telling you, hey, something's going on because we have a magnificent body that God created that helps to maintain balance of, in, in working condition. But life circumstances are actually our perception of life circumstances can interfere with that normal balancing entity that we have. And so keeping a list of your symptoms is very important. Don't go in your doctor's office and saying and just tell them, well, I'm having stomach pains and, and point to it. Say, you know, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here, look at my log. I'm having stomach pains. You know, uh, this is what's going on with me. So number one, be a student of your health. It doesn't mean being obsessed. It means really being in tune with your body. Because no matter what success, I know there's a lot of promotion about having a business and what you can do for a business. But if you are not alive, if you are not well, take it from someone who knows, 
who cares about the business right now? <laughs> you're in pain and, and you're not feeling well and you need attention. So number one, um, do get a diary, get a journal of some sort, keep your symptoms. Number two, you there are websites you can look up information if you want to know about it, especially after the doctor has given you a diagnosis. Um, NIH, National Institutes of Health, CDC, Centers for D Disease Control, uh, WHO, World Health Organization, there are some reliable sites that you can look up information, even regarding COVID. You know, what are the symptoms? How long um, does the virus stay in you? You know, how long before you start getting symptoms? Those are things that's good to know. And knowledge is not about obsession. Knowledge is about knowing, knowing what's going on. And then once you know, you're not as fearful. It's like, oh, okay, this is what's going on. Let me let me write this down. And, and listening to your body. You know, it may be just a, a restful night may be sufficient for you to feel better the next day. Um, so being a student of your health, learning about your diagnosis, what is needed, because there are too many people, you know, I even had a nursing student and not call not any names. If you're watching this, you know who I'm talking about. But I had um, a previous nursing student that told me she was diagnosed with a condition and she went to the doctor and the doctor said, oh, you, you just have a touch of it. No big deal. Didn't give her a meter, didn't to test her blood sugars or anything like that. And she reached out to me. And my thing is, if you have been diagnosed with something, there's no more, there's a touch of diabetes. There's a touch of sugar. There is a mechanism that goes on in your body, your pancreas, which produces insulin, and the sugar you eat from your foods. And I've, I've discussed, I've dispelled a lot of myths regarding fruits and sugar in my blogs. And the, the sugar you eat in your foods and the insulin is supposed to help, you know, kind of get insulin helps to get the blood sugar out of your cell, out of your bloodstream as much as possible. We have normal sugars between 80, 120 or so, 80 to 110 or 70 to 110, I think is what it is now. But anyway, there is a normal amount of sugar that maintains in your, the sustains in your bloodstream and helps your body work the way it needs to, just like fuel in a car. And that extra the extra sugar sitting out there goes into your cells. Your liver um, is able to, to produce, to, to break down stored sugar and release it out when you need it. But if you are having a diagnosis such as diabetes, you want to know what your sugars are. I mean, there have been incidences where people, and I'm not trying to scare you. My thing is always to inform you and not to scare you. But there have been people out there that have been driving cars and had strokes, heart attacks, low blood sugar, um, um, low blood sugar reactions and as you may know low blood sugar reactions actions can also look like you are drunk and the thing is is that you are in control of your your of knowing what your blood sugars are before you step foot in a car take your blood sugar see what it is prick your finger because pricking your finger could mean life or death that if your sugars get too low, your body cannot function the way it needs to. If your sugars get too high, your body cannot function the way it needs to. So whoever is waiting for, for you on, in point B, you're, you're at A at your house, can wait. There is nothing too important, more important than you and your health. So check your sugars, get a meter. There's too much information about diabetes for you to go saying, I don't need to check. I don't need to know what's going on because it's your health. And if anyone deserves the right health, it is you because you are the one that lives with yourself 24 seven. The other point that I wanted to make is that many times doctors, and this has just recently happened, doctors will want you to do certain things and uh, they'll order tests and they'll say, hey, go get this done. And often what goes on is that we don't check and see if our insurance covers that test. And many times we come home, we, we, we have the test, we have whatever we need to do. And then months later, or maybe 31 days later, we, we get, excuse me, we get a um, bill, excuse me, we get a bill in the mail that tells us we owe thousands of dollars. <coughs> that something we could have deferred. 
Some got karma. Girl! <laughs> so, what I'm saying is that before you get the test done, and it used to be where nurses would check on that for you at the office. They, they would have nurses that are dedicated or even the nurse that is working with the doctor to go and make sure that whatever test they're ordering is covered by your health insurance. But what I'm finding out now is that I think that's, that's less occurring now. I think doctors are ordering stuff and it's up to the patient or the person to go check and make sure their insurance is covering it. I know sometimes you could be on the phone for a long time with customer service, but I found too that they are often answering the phones a lot quicker. And usually as you learn the, the telephone system with your um, customer service, there is an option to hit pound or, or zero to get a customer service without hearing all of this other talk. And I know customer service insurance companies may not like this, but I, I want to, if, if I'm, I, my time is valuable and I need to talk to somebody. And if there's somebody on the line that is waiting because I haven't pressed the right key, then I want to press the right key and I want to talk to you because that's what you're there for. That's what you're getting paid to do. And so it doesn't take much to say, you know what, wait a minute, let me check with my insurance, make sure it's covered because when it all boils down, you guys, you are the one that's going to be paying for the bill. Not the doctor, not the doctor say, oh, you know what, darn it, I should have checked on that for you, you know, or I should have had my nurse check on that for you. Once you get the bill, you have the bill. You have that bill to pay off. And real quick, that, that can be sent to um, collections or whatever else. So I'm not saying it again to um, belittle anyone, healthcare professionals. I'm saying it because I want you to be informed. And anybody that is caring for you, any healthcare provider that is caring for you, also should also want you to be informed and many times I've told often I've told people that if your health care provider is not meeting you where you are if they're not listening to your complaints your concerns then it's time to get another opinion there's too much going on right now we have COVID a lot of people are stressed a lot of people have lost loved ones there are some people who are going for tests, going for surgeries, and the last thing you want, especially if you have been laid off, if you had changes in your income, is to owe a large bill. So I encourage you that the time it takes to check on something is the time well worth it. Nobody, nobody, you should not be stressed about already getting a procedure done. I mean, having to at least think about if it's gonna be paid for. You're thinking about the procedure, getting ready for procedure, what is it gonna to mean to your health state? And I don't know about you, but I don't wanna be laying in the bed looking at a $15,000 bill. I'm just, don't wanna do it. So really, that's, a, that's one of the major steps I've often found in people is that they're hesitant about calling their doctor. They're hesitant about calling the insurance company and getting an answer. And whatever you ask, a lot of times if you just ask the insurance company, hey, I need to know specifically, is this covered or not? Is it covered or not? Yes or no? Well, maybe sort of know what's covered and what do I have to pay? And I've even had that with my son going to the, to the, um, to the um, eye professional is that you know she gave us a high price 300 and something dollar for his glasses the blue glasses if you guys have probably seen it and then i'm like wait a minute something's wrong if i pay 300 dollars and they're not working right then i'm out of my 300 dollars but another nurse who was in the office i think she either a nurse or the secretary the nurse probably anyway she worked there and she was like i understand your concerns i hear your questions Hey, so check this out. You can go with the lower cost, lower cost option that still gives them good eyesight. And if you need to bump up, then you can bump up. There's no sense paying for something that may not work, the total price of it. I'd rather, and that made more sense to me because I couldn't wrap my head around paying $300 for something that I couldn't get a refund for. This is just crazy, absolutely crazy. And so you got to keep your eyes open. Many people tell you, you ask too many questions or they look at you like your questions are 
just horrible or you're like you're you're stupid as you know there's no one there's no stupid questions i learned that a long time ago i think mr hand if anybody that's listening to this that went to venice school i think it was mr hand or maybe mr aarons but someone wrote there was something on the board that said no question is stupid and i took that to heart no question is stupid so i will ask questions and I'll keep asking questions until I feel right inside because the only person that will really suffer the consequences is you. And you're too precious, too valuable to be suffering from something that could have been prevented. So I just, you know, it, it and, and make sure when you do get a medication or something done, make sure you read the instructions. Make sure if you have high blood pressure issues or any other medical issues, that you tell your doctor about it because remember you guys doctors i tell people all the time when you look at people in their profession even me as a nurse all of us have have a certain personality when we become a doctor or nurse it does not change often change who we are at the core if we have anger issues, if we have jealous, jealous issues, unless we've gotten to those and changed those, we still have them. And so if you have, you know, you could have a, a person who's a rush rusher. You know, I was a rush rusher often in nursing. And guess what? When we rush, we make mistakes. And so if, you know, there is a potential that sometimes doctors forget what, you know, health conditions you have or, or they don't have time to look into stuff because they have a certain amount of time they have to spend with you and then they have to move on to the next patient per, you know, their their guidelines of what they're getting paid for to do. So not everybody's the same, but just remember that doctors are human too. You are a team member of your health. The doctor is not the only person that is taking care of your health. Here's you, here's the doctor. You work as a team. And whatever else health care professional is surrounding you, you are the one that helps to make the decisions. Nothing, nothing should get past you without you first thinking about it, researching about it, researching your insurance, researching the condition. I've done it several times. I was paying $18 for an eye wash and end up... Uh, doing some research you guys online found out uh baby um it's a baby shampoo my son had had been coughing in my eye he got something from daycare and i got it the bacteria and it just kept coming 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 the eye wash wasn't even working and it was 18 bucks but they were still trying to sell it to me and then i i did i went online and found an eight um what do you pay you pay one two dollars for skin uh baby soft the, the shampoo, the baby shampoo. I use that. My symptoms are gone. I rarely even use it now. Like within a, with, I noticed immediate relief, immediate that I, that as time went on, there would be gaps before I would even have any problems. And I have a big bottle underneath. I, I just have it just in case. I've used it once, I think, since I've been here. And even then I wasn't having a problem, but I just thought, you know, I had some little white flakes and I washed it. But other than that, I paid two dollars for it versus eighteen dollars that would last me like 30, 60 days, one to two months. So please do your research. If you don't know, if you have a healthcare professional in your family, ask them to help. Do not let your pride, your ego, or whatever it is, your fear or what they're gonna think about you stop you. Okay? You have you are in control of your health. I know I hope that whoever you go to is not trying to control your health. Be someone that that is helpful. If you're a healthcare professional, be someone that's helpful. If people don't listen, turn the other way. But I want you to know for you, for me, I've been a patient before. I've seen it that you have to speak up for yourself. Taking care of yourself is not something that's um that gets played out. Taking care of yourself, advocating for yourself is a day-to-day -day thing that you do and it's part of your self-care ritual if whenever you in doubt i would tell my students whenever you in doubt check it out all right so just thought i would rant a little bit right is that what it seems like that i ranted but i really want maybe this is um i believe that nothing happens um nothing is a coincidence and it's just been on my heart to share those few things 
with you that you are in control of your health. You, you're not. You, if you're looking at this, you're not dead yet. Do what you need to do to take care of yourself. Ask the questions you need to ask. Check with the people you need to check with and get the right care for yourself. We already know there are issues with quality of care, um, cost of care. Don't keep adding to it without being a student of your health. Talk to you guys later. Take care.